that's that's who wants me. Why are we not advancing on the click? <laughs> because I'm not. <laughs> yeah. There, I want to say that first. Hey, that's not. I actually hey, found that's pictures good. of our volunteers. So <laughs> let's let's say thanks to who fed us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for You both look very studious. Hey, uh, that's all I could find was pictures of them studying. That's because I take pictures and send them to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we are following this series called By Faith, and we're looking at some, we're actually looking at Hebrews, um, which talks about how our ancestors live by faith, and then we will also be hearing, we'll progress through the season. So tonight's Noah. We are all pretty familiar with Noah and his story, and yeah, let's advance. Um, and this is kind of our question as we head into our time together. How do we have faith in things not yet seen? And um, that's part of everyday life. How do we have faith in things not yet seen? And um, that those were the, the, that was by faith Noah built the ark, gathered the animals, watched the waters rise, and received the rainbow promise. Um, that was in all my ads to get you here tonight. If you okay, let's let's advance. Okay, we have an opening dialogue, and then we'll sing a little after that. Um, I got Paul on my clicker. He has a guide. Um, so here's your clicker guide, and here's my leader guide. So we're <laughs> all right. So opening dialogue. You had a couple of ways you received your bulletin, and um, mostly today they did not work. But you can get, you could get to that bulletin on the website. If you'd love to have it written out for you, I have a couple large print bulletins here. I'd like feedback on whether you've used it and whether you are like, that's the way I'd like to have my stuff because we don't want to print for you if no one's going to use it or we don't want to not have enough if we don't have enough. All right. The other way the bulletin is arriving is right here. Okay. So, so either one of those ways can work, and that's new for us in this setting, and so I wanted to make sure we were on board. Yeah, all right. So those of you that, are, that may be tuning in online, and there you are, welcome. And um, you will need to go to the website to get those worship resources tonight. Uh, for some reason, my email was not going out today without all bouncing back so my apologies so fixing that tomorrow so let's begin with our opening dialogue oh we're supposed to light our candles and this is my little note um, candles are lit now we set out a bunch for everyone um we, we have matches so if and that's to kind of remind us that now we are moving into our worship mode. Um, since this was where we ate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, Paul made sure. Paul made sure that we have our eternal candle operates in a different manner, and these are the old refills. <laughs> that have been sitting in the cupboard for five years. So we're gonna use them. He says he's watching on the street. <laughs> oh, golly sakes. Now knowing him, he probably is doing what he says he's doing, but he gets shy and wants to just go home. So, okay. All right, so we've lit our candles and we are ready then. Okay. 
Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. Since we have confidence by the new and living way opened for us by Jesus, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith. All right. Now, Paul, you go ahead to that slide, but you're going to have to actually touch the red button. This is a song that we've learned together as council at our retreat. The, it is from Ghana. And for that particular group of people, Bambalela means I will follow. I will follow. So it's a discipleship song, but it's also an encouragement song. So we'll listen to it. The only word that you need to know to sing along is Bambalela. Bambalela. Now there's a lead in this who then introduces and, um, so just start listening and then join in when it makes sense to you. All right. Okay. So let's go. And we, I think the volume is going to be okay. <laughs>
Can you keep it going and I'll be the lead? How's that? Bambalela, 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 Bamba, 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 Oh, Bamba, Bamba. Oh, I didn't find it. Bumble, I'll take that. 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 Bumble, I'll Never, 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 oh, never, never give up. Okay, so you get the sense of that song. You, turn, you call up verses, and we're going to have to deal with the issues that we encounter once we try them out with the double, double call on that stream. Okay, we're going to go on. And um, we're going to look at our theme verse. And would anybody like to read that for us out loud, or would you like to just have me read it? Anybody willing to read? Okay, I'll read. I'll read. Now, okay, go ahead. Yeah, and keep going. He'll keep going to the next verse that's on. Yeah. Your faith is confidence in what we hope for, the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was invisible. By faith, Noah warned about things not yet seen, and holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he began the world, and he heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Okay. I was going to use a very fun kid video to um, tell, remind us of Noah's story. But we don't have little ones here, so let's let's do... Yeah, but I think it's going to do that to do, to do, to do, that the other one was doing. I'm guessing. Start and see what it does. Please help the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Noah and the flood. Yeah. This is Noah. Hey. Noah was a good man who tried to do the right thing. Yeah. But in the time when Noah lived, he was the only man on earth who was doing the right thing. All the other people on earth were in the This made God very sad. So God said that he was going to send a flood to the earth that would destroy every living thing on earth because he was sorry he ever made them. But God decided to save Noah and his family. God told the boat to build a boat and fill it with two of every kind of animal and bird. Noah did just that, and then Noah and his whole family boarded the boat and waited for the flood to come. The rain fell hard for 40 days and 40 nights. Water covered the whole earth, and the boat floated safely on the surface. Water covered even the highest mountains on earth. But Noah and his family were saved. God remembered Noah and all the animals on the boat. God sent the wind to blow across the earth, and the flood began to go away. After five months, the boat came to rest on a mountaintop. A few months later, the other mountains could be seen. Forty days later, Noah opened a window and released the raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood had dried up. He also sent the dove out to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove couldn't find a place to land because there was still water on the ground. 
So the dove returned to the boat. After another seven days, Noah sent the dove out again. This time it came back with an olive leaf. So Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. A week later, he sent the dove out again and it didn't come back. So many months after the flood began, Noah opened the covering of the boat and saw that the ground was dry. He waited two more months and at last the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you. Release the animals so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. Okay. So Noah, his family, and all the animals finally left the boat. Leo. Noah built an altar to the Lord to make a sacrifice to God. God was pleased with Noah's offering and said to himself that he would never again destroy every living thing on earth. God blessed Noah and his sons and promised them that he would never send another flood. He gave them the rainbow in the sky as a sign of this promise to Noah, his family, and all of mankind. Okay, so that was a good review. Um, I wanted to be prepared for, for all ages. <laughs> so I put the adults through the, the, the little fun video. Yeah, it's a cute little video. And, um, but that reminds us of all the important parts that, um, that are there because um, we want to think about that particular scripture passage and what it teaches us about living by faith because Noah is that particular example. So I have some questions for us to talk with in groups. If you want to separate away from families and you want to do some of that, you can. And um, But there I gave us some questions to, to do. We, to do in our little group together, and then we'll share from there. All right. So, because because we have heard this one, and and we just need to think, how does this apply now to my 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 life now, and how I can live by faith? So, um, do you need me to put you in groups? Should I count off? <laughs> Terry's looking at me like, don't make me work. It's the evening. Four, 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 four. Yeah. Okay, four, four, four. Suzanne's done it. You're in your groups. All right. I'm going to read these in case you can't read them. They're also in that bulletin. What did Noah do to show he was living by faith? I mean, name two or three things you saw happening that show that. Do you know anyone who has shown their faith in the same way? Do you know somebody like a Noah? And if so, tell their story to your group. Um, why was Noah faithful to God's instructions? I mean, what? Why was he? Or where did he get that faithfulness from? It just he shows up, he's faithful. And or where does faithfulness come from? So, I mean, think about that. Um, and we'll talk about this one some as we get to the end. Because Hebrews has an answer for it. So we'll go get at. So, okay, let's let's go with our um, I will join a group. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. 
So who is your story? That says it all. Yeah. All right, is your group, has your group been through your your things and had enough time? Okay, well, I think it would be nice if, if it would be nice to hear those stories that may have come in your groups about someone you knew who you like, well, that person had faith like Noah. Anybody have those kind of people come to mind so we can share with everybody? I don't know anybody that faith like Noah. I mean, you know, you so if Adam came to her and said, hey, we'll be a big flood, I'm going to big break. <laughs> Out in your field, yeah. Yeah, I agree. You'd say, what drugs are, is he on? <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know anyone like that from what we Not know. Not so faith. We talked about the closest thing we probably know in our daily lives is childlike faith. You know, just the blind obedience, the, because you don't, you don't recognize that there are other ways to approach it. And then missionaries that we know of or have heard of don't necessarily personally 
but they have amazing stories of that type, like the Elliott family or, you know, like Harriet Tubman or somebody <clears throat> like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a, a friend, but he one of my student, one of my students that um, uh, came back to Circleville, uh, got a job teaching math, really good math teacher. Um, married, had a couple kids. After teaching two, three, maybe four years, no longer than four years, so he was a young fellow. Um, he quit teaching uh, to become a missionary at some place in Central America. And last I knew, he and his family were still down there. And that's been 10 plus years. And so, um, had everything going what normal people would consider a normal life, mm -hmm. but yeah. chucked it all, yeah. not as an individual, but as a family, and they all <laughs> together um, heeded the call and went elsewhere where they were needed in another way. I just finished reading Harris Faulkner's book, They Still Moved to Mountains. And it's just loaded with stories of people that are mm -hmm. tremendous. Mm -hmm. That's the book you mm -hmm. read. What book did you read? And it and your name on it's impacting. One, one example was a lady that had a prayer closet in her house. There was a tornado. When the tornado was over, she walked out the door of that prayer closet, and it was a small closet. Nothing else was left. But she was in that prayer closet with her grandchildren. Praying all the time to God take care of them. Mm -hmm. And that room stood while the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. There's so many examples just, like that. Yeah. Like with, with Clara, we do a different person each week. We focus on a different person each week. If you get to watch like the torch lighter, um, you know? yeah. And so they always have people that are like this, that have that type of faith, like Corey Ten Boom or somebody. Yeah. And the, um, the amazing influence that they have had on other people. Do you want to share your story? Because I, I just want to say, Nate, like 20 years ago, Friends of Ours in Nashville, um, with four young children, um, we had a call to be in a lot of missionary, and they figured they'd be staying right here, and she could keep her perfect job, and both sets of parents were here, and lo and behold, their first assignment was to go to Kansas, and they knew no one, and they went in faith, and they just prospered amazingly and everything everything they've ever touched it seems to be golden for them. They're, they're actually back here now, but it was a, a huge leap of faith. Well, Pastor coming to uh, at St. Paul is a huge leap of faith. <laughs> 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 what a wild one she was getting into. Well, there's a no, there were many safe things about coming to be with you all. So, yeah. Um, so we see what Noah did as a mission, as a call to mission that he responded to. Um, I think that little video showed effectively, too, that he did stand up in a culture that was not was not necessarily. Do we know people that sometimes are countercultural with what they do? Is that is that like the faith of Noah? We were joking, yeah, we medicate those people and put them in an institution. <laughs> I mean, the people that have the kind of personalities and do the kinds of things that Noah did, we commit those people today. Do we, or are we getting too big? Are we, because um, Noah's was such a big thing, we're like, well, it's got to be something huge. What about if it's a kid in the hallway at school? Um, that there's a whole bunch of teasing going on of one other kid and that kid says, hey, that's not cool. And is that a countercultural thing that has the faith of Noah? I mean, we have to, you know, I know Noah builds an ark and that may seem super big, but do we know of or have we been able to do those kinds of acts of faith in where we're at? Um, that's a thing we, we're going to always be exploring throughout this. And watch for as we go from this place together, well, did that just happen to me? Or did I just get that chance and I chose 
not to be like Noah or I, you know, so that's part of this journey too. Different, different people have their own arch to build, so to speak, metaphorically. Um, the young lady at Columbine that when the dad said, Does anybody hear a Christian? And she stood up and they killed her. That was an act of faith equal to the bill. Or, you know, I mean, that's incredible. Um, we all, and it, people, my children say, we all, we, different people have their own. And that arcs. that was her thing, but it's it's somehow remembered. So the witnesses remember that, right. and the witnesses remember that she's she's gone, and and that is a terrible tragedy, and that shouldn't have happened, and yet the witnesses remember that, and um, I sure we that remember. Story. And we remember it. All the stories. Come. We remember oh, it. Okay. That yeah. What sticks out to me. And we have committed some. <laughs> we have committed some. We said, oh, well, you need to go and have uh, some care. Um, so, okay. Now, we're going to be exploring this. This one is, why Why are people faithful at all? And why, why in the midst of this big ask, did Noah do this? Because we have to, like, kind of discuss that. Um, and think about that and feel that in our gut sometimes. I mean, where does faithfulness come from? How does it hit us? Um, and so any ideas there? I, I think that, first of all, you have to have relationship is an important word there. Um, God and, and whoever, Noah or whoever, uh, there has to be a relationship there. And once that relationship is established, then I think um, faith is part of that gift that we receive from God through Spirit. Um, and uh, sometimes uh, we have to um, nurture that and, uh, through our daily living and hopefully as we do a good job um, following what the Spirit wants us to do, that faith gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and sometimes we don't do so such a good job, and, and our faith gets, can get weaker and weaker and weaker. But I think it's a, it's a gift, part of that gift that God gives us, that uh, begins first of all with relationship. Mm -hmm. So it begins with God. Maybe God encouraged Noah. You know, the hugeness of the project. He didn't have forest right next door that he could go cut his own trees. He had to get the materials someplace. And if somebody said, yeah, I got some extra lumber out here, you can have that. You know, was that God encouraging Noah all along? Is, was that part of the instructions that, that God was giving him through other things? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that is a good question. Is God calling me to faithfulness right here? Um, <clears throat> Is this a way God is trying to encourage me into a faithful space? Um, yeah. So we'll we'll have that one almost every week during this series, and the um, we're sharing some particular prayers that are going to be coming up that are crafted some for our individual weeks, but some for um, then the whole series, we're going to learn and have a prayer that Martin Luther prayed about faith. And um, so, so that's still coming. Um, and I will wrap us up there and we'll be looking next week at Abraham and Abraham's faith. So, um, so that's part of, these are all the stars of, stars of the old testament so we're gonna i picked hymns for what encourages us in our faithfulness um in the places that we have to go and and when peace like a river made sense especially after um noah's trauma in the water because <laughs> it begins when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows run. so um we're gonna sing that and I was planning on just us singing that a cappella. I think most of us know it. I will. Sally's favorite. 
It is it Sally's favorite? It is too much. But um, I brought this these here in case someone's like, I would love to see the parts in front of me right now for that because I love the parts to that. And so, um, oh, it's the wrong number. <laughs> No, it's it's in here with keeps saying two or one. It's two ten. It's two ten. So if if you want, you are welcome to come get one if you're that kind of that's where we start. Okay? All right. either in your bulletin or up here. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us pray for the church and those in need and all of God's creation. Faithful God, shower the world with your loving kindness that all may know your peace. Open our eyes to the needs of our neighbors that all may know your love. Comfort the sick and dying, that all may know your mercy. Guide our leaders in the way of truth, that all may know your justice. 
Focus our hearts on the way of the cross that all may have faith in you. Let us pray in the words of Martin Luther. We'll pray together, even though he's a complicated writer, we'll get through this. Behold, Lord, an empty vessel that needs to be filled. My Lord, fill it. I am weak in the faith, strengthen me. I am cold in love, warm me and make me fervent, that my love may go out to my neighbor. I do not have a strong and firm faith. At times I doubt and am unable to trust you altogether. O oh Lord, help me. Strengthen my faith and trust in you. In you I have sealed the treasure of all I have. I am poor, you are rich, and came to be merciful to the poor. I am a sinner, you are upright. With me there is an abundance of sin, in you is the fullness of righteousness. Therefore I will remain with you, of whom I can receive, but to whom I may not give. Amen. Finally, let us pray with the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have a blessing um, for you. I like this because there's that receiving of the olive branch. And sometimes that's what we need at that moment when we need to know that, okay, we can hold on in faith. So here's the sign from God, the olive branch. So the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, um, we have a song to try, um, and I'm not sure if how it will go, but this one, I can lead better. We have to, there it is. Be still, God will fight your battles. Be still, God will fight your battles. Be still, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just be still. Keep the praying, God will fight your battles. Keep the praying, God will fight your battles. Keep the praying, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Keep the waiting, God will fight your battles. Keep the waiting, God will fight your battles. Keep the waiting, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Keep the singing, God will fight your battles. Keep the singing, God will fight your battles. Keep the singing, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. I'm a witness, God will fight your battles. I'm a witness, God will fight your battles. I'm a witness, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Be still, God will fight your battles. Be still, God will fight your battles. Be still, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Keep the praying, God will fight your battles. Keep the praying, God will fight your battles. Keep the praying, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles if you just keep still. Keep the waiting, God will fight your battles. Keep the waiting, God will fight your battles. Keep the waiting, God will fight your battles. God will fight your battles.
because you can use them around the house. And if you're just like getting so down about something, you can just start singing those and you can put in, we've done keep a folding. <laughs> <laughs> keep a whatever. Keep a working, you know, and it just helps you. There's just so much to it. So there's, I'm just, I bring that to you because that's just how I operate. So. We're going to share Christ's peace as we go on our way tonight and carry, put out the candles and carry that light with you <coughs> on your way. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with our tech problems. No, it's not off. Just a second. There it is. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 